Jim Angle is joining us now from Washington. Uh, Jim, what can you tell us about that fire outside the Pentagon? Jim Angle, are you with us? Uh, I can tell you first that the roads around the White House, the streets around the White House, were blocked seconds ago. Uh, members of the Uniform Division of the Secret Service ran out to intersections and started diverting traffic. There are emergency vehicles on almost every block around the White House. The road south of the White House has also been blocked. And as you know, the White House is being evacuated. Federal employees are standing on the street corners in and around the White House, uh, having left the building for fear of another attack. As you come into Washington from Virginia, about two miles from the Pentagon, you can see the smoke billowing up from the building, huge clouds of smoke, so much so that uh, commuters coming into town have pulled over to the side of a busy freeway, what is ordinarily a busy freeway, and are sitting watching in amazement as the symbol of the United States defense establishment uh, goes up in smoke. So there is an amazement all over Washington. Uh, people are not sure what to think. Uh, you've got a lot of federal employees standing around in this area watching as the streets are blocked off and emergency vehicles rush to and fro. We're not sure uh, what they are up to, uh, but clearly there is concern about the safety of the White House and the surrounding buildings. John. Uh, Jim, do you know anything about uh, what kind of uh, plane or helicopter uh, is involved in that Pentagon incident? I do not, but I can tell you uh, whatever it is, it caused substantial uh, damage and fire. Uh, I can't tell you how large the smoke plumes are coming from the Pentagon. Uh, Folks, it is, it, Jim, it let is, me interrupt it, you. Uh, we are looking at live pictures of the World Trade Center literally starting to crumble. It is, it is falling apart as, uh, as we watch these pictures live. The World Trade Center, 110 stories, literally starting to fall. Bill Daly, let me bring you into the conversation. I know this was the goal of the terrorist strike back in 1993. Yeah, John, it, it was, and uh, they thought they could do it by putting charges down in the basement and, uh, and damaging the, the understructure. Um, as much as these buildings were, were built to withstand uh, a, a certain large hit, and including some aircraft, apparently uh, the structural integrity appears, from what we can see here, uh, to be faltering to some degree. They were not designed perhaps to take a direct strike from something the size of a 737 or perhaps a, an Airbus, perhaps fully loaded with fuel. Steel will melt. And uh, that, all right, uh, David Lee Miller is, uh, is still with us. Uh, David, what can you tell us? <laughs> David Lee Miller, can you tell us uh, what happened there? All right, David Lee Miller, who has seen his share of horrors around the world in trouble spots in the Middle East and elsewhere, is in that area uh, reporting on what we think we can see. I, I want to stress it's, it's tough to... Hello? Yeah, David Lee, what can you tell us? John, uh, the scene is horrific. One of the two towers literally collapsed. I was making my way to the foot of the World Trade Center suddenly while talking to an officer was questioning me about my press credentials. We heard a very loud blast, an explosion. We looked up, and the uh, building literally began to collapse before us. There was uh, debris falling, uh, I'd say, at least three-quarters the height of the building. People within uh, the entire perimeter began literally, including myself, which is why I'm out of breath, to run for our lives. And I am now standing uh, in a black cloud of, of, of smoke left over from the debris, debris there's soot, it's difficult to breathe. People ran into nearby office buildings once they got out of the danger zone just to be able to breathe. I'm on a payphone on the street right now, and I literally cannot see more than a quarter block away. That's how thick the smoke is. I'm on Murray Street and West Broadway, for those who know Lower Manhattan. Not clear now is why this uh, explosion took place. Was uh, it because of the uh, the planes that uh, two planes dual attacks this morning, or was there some other attack which there has been talk of here on the street? But I can tell you this: that uh, the police have moved people back, and it's going to be a long time. 
Yeah, David, uh, we are looking at the replay of what happened that you're describing. It happened just moments ago. It sure appears that the building simply collapsed Hello? based... Yeah, David, if you're, if you're still with us, please keep on the line. It, it appears that the building simply collapsed of its own weight, that there was so much damage uh, from the heat of the fire. Uh, as I said, steel will melt. The, the second... That was the... The, the building that was hit by the second plane, the, the plane that we actually saw hit the building live during our coverage, uh, that is the building that has just collapsed. Now, it, it bears noting that that plane seemed to come in at a lower altitude. It hit the building lower down, and there was that tremendous fireball. So the damage to the building uh, came at a point where there is much more weight on top of it, and those steel girders, strong as they are, had a lot of weight to support, and apparently, I'm just, uh, I'm not a structural engineer, but I'm, I'm just guessing now that they gave way. The loss of life here is going to be enormous. May, may uh, God help those who are there, and the victims, and their families, uh, and all the souls that are lost today. Yeah. I think it's safe to say that virtually every family in America is going to be touched by this, uh, by this disaster. This is what the uh, terrorists back in 1993 tried to accomplish when they uh, drove a uh, van laden full of bombs into the garage. Uh, and apparently, they were successful. John? Let me bring in the former governor of New York, Mario Cuomo. He's with us by telephone now. Governor, what's your reaction? That's the only thing I can ask you. It's the same as everyone else's. Uh, everybody now is, is holding their breath and measuring the extent of the tragedy as it grows from moment to moment. And that will be the story, I'm sure, for the next uh, 24 hours, is how much damage was done. I think the, the longer-range story is even more terrible. The longer-range story is who did it and why. And if it were a nation, it would be easy to deal with. But it's not a nation. It'll be individual Excuse terrorists. Excuse me. Uh, Governor, can you hold... Hold on for just a second. From the tower, from right to left, I guess, west to east, and it just, everything just all of a sudden just imploded. I ran as fast as I could, went inside of a building about a block away. I stood in the building for a couple of seconds, and then all of a sudden the building started falling out, filling up with smoke. I was with a bunch of law enforcement officers. We couldn't get out of the building because everything was locked up. And then I came out, and everything was filled with ash, and it looks like I'm... Looks like I'm in a surreal movie. Do you, do you know if it was an explosion or if it was a building collapse? To me, it sounded like it, it, to me it sounded like an explosion. Then then the building, the rolling sound sounded like the building collapsed. Were, were there other people? There must have been a lot of people on the ground nearby when it happened. Oh, mo where that happened, there was mostly law enforcement. I don't think there were many uh, the civilians there. I don't know. Don't move, Pat. How many, These... how many people would you say were on the ground when the uh, when the building exploded or collapsed? Law enforcement, were, I don't I, over on that corner there. I don't know. There might have been there might have been 100, 150. I don't know. What's your, what's your full name, officer? Police officer Gronowski. All right. Thanks a lot. Good luck. What does that have to happen?